What's going on future and current CWIs? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. My main goal here is to make you a CWI on the first try and give you the latest and greatest on this CWI exam. You go and meet it. So for this new video, I would consider it as part two and continue to look at guided band test specimens. The reason I emphasize on this section is because there were quite a few questions asked on the Part B exam for this specific topic. So this video will mainly focus on 5.4.2.1, Structural Steel Applications. For acceptance, the surface shall contain no discontinuities in the weld or heat affected zone, per the below. So there are three rules for this section, and you're going to have to figure out which one will apply depending on what the question asks or what discontinuities you see. So for rule number one, a single discontinuity can be greater than an eighth of an inch in any direction on the surface. So measure your discontinuity, fracture, tear, whatever is it that you see with your machinist ruler. If it's less than eighth of an inch or an eighth of an inch on the money, it's acceptable. But if it's greater than an eighth of an inch, it's rejectable and there's no need to move on to the other two rules below. So for this example, after measuring the single fracture with my machinist ruler, I got between the 632nd and the 732nd. And for these timed exams, my recommendation is measure it one time and call it. People tend to measure two, three, four times and overthink it. Nine out of 10 times, you're correct the first time. So for this rule, per my reading, it exceeds an eighth of an inch and it's rejected. So for rule number two, it confuses a lot of candidates. So I'm gonna try my best to break it down as best as possible. This rule will basically apply if you have multiple fractures on the bend specimen exceeding a 32nd of an inch, but less than or equal to an eighth of an inch. If you do see a discontinuity of a 32nd of an inch on the money, disregard it. You have to add up the total sum of each fracture and it can't be greater and three eighths of an inch. So here's an example of a code interpretation question you may see pertaining to rule number two. Um, don't let this question confuse you or trick you just because you see a lot of fractions on there. And even though you do see a couple of the 32nd of an inch fractions on there, just disregard them. As long as the, the total sum uh, of each tear doesn't exceed a three eighths of an inch, you're golden. Remember, part B is mostly a reading comprehension exam I said it once, I said it twice, and I'll say it again. Make sure you understand the book of specifications like the back of your hand. So for rule number three, a quarter inch is the maximum corner crack, except when that corner crack results from visible slag inclusion or other fusion type discontinuities, then the eighth inch max rule shall apply. When you're taking your exam, the question will clearly tell you if there is visible slag inclusion or other fusion type discontinuities, then you have to apply the eighth inch max rule. If the question states that there is no visible slag inclusion or other fusion discontinuities, and if the crack is less than a quarter of an inch, it's acceptable. But per that last paragraph on rule number three, if the corner crack exceeds a quarter of an inch, the specimen should be disregarded and a replacement test specimen from the original wellman shall be tested. So the training guide that I developed is not here to replace a seminar or here to replace a, a full-time CWI instructor. It's here to give you that extra resources, that extra edge that you may need to pass the exam. You know, all the content that I provide you is based on my experience and how I interpret the book of specifications.